Good morning everyone. This is Saurabh from Quick Heal Technologies. Thank you for joining us for this webinar on the dangers of fake antivirus software. This webinar will be presented by Mr. Nikhil More. Nikhil is an online marketing manager at Quick Heal Technologies and has over 9 years of experience in digital marketing and a passion for technology, usability and photography. Nikhil is also a recognized expert in the internet marketing strategies for the antivirus industry. At Quick Heal, Nikhil is associated with the cyber security program which is the company's corporate social responsibility initiative. I will now hand over the proceedings to Mr. Nikhil. Good morning everyone and a warm welcome to today's webinar on the dangers of fake antivirus software. Now this topic is a little intriguing and might have uh, uh, you know made you think as to I am using a genuine software I'm using a genuine antivirus and and why is that I'm getting this invitation for a webinar so lately what we have observed is there has been a rise in uh, uh, you know the fake antivirus and people being victims of it this has been something that's been going f uh, on for some time now and uh, people who are uh, uh, you know downloading free softwares from the internet uh, sometimes they also do uh, some you know download fake antivirus without the knowledge that the software is a fake antivirus and they become victims so today's webinar we would be talking about uh, you know what is a fake antivirus and and the effects of it let me briefly begin with a few things that I would like to uh, you know discuss about before we uh, begin today's webinar if you have so this is a, a bit of technical topic so in case you have any questions please do make note of those questions and you can send them to us at corporate communications at quickheal.co.in and uh, our team would do the best to answer those questions for you make a note of the slide number uh, also, the recording for this webinar will be available uh, on our YouTube channel that uh, we'll be uh, posting, and also this presentation would be web, uh, would be hosted on SlideShare. So, coming back to the topic, what is a fake antivirus? Now, fake antivirus is one of the most frequently encountered threats on the internet today, also known as rogue antivirus. Uh, or rogue software or scareware so fake antivirus uses social engineering techniques to lure uh, users to malicious sites and scare them into paying for fake threat removal tools the agenda for today's webinar is mainly to provide insights about where these fake antivirus come from how are they distributed what happens when a computer is infected with fake antivirus and how to stop this persistent threat from infecting your personal computer or your computer network or the users of your computer network. Let's broadly look at the topics that will be covered in today's webinar. What is a fake antivirus? How does a fake antivirus spread? Behavior of a fake antivirus? Avoiding fake antiviruses, uh, downloading of uh, you know, fake antivirus software, uh, most importantly, how can Quick Heal help you uh, in this regard? So, very quickly, let's begin today's webinar with an opinion poll because this is something that I would like to know uh, from you uh, about what's your choice when it comes to choosing the uh, antivirus software. Okay, you can see the question on your screen at the moment. Now, when you are sitting on a computer and uh, you know you see there is a pop-up link which asks you to uh, scan your computer for free for, and to check if there is any and uh, you know any virus uh, infection to your machine, what would you do? My, uh, I, uh, the answers to these questions is uh, attempt the scan by clicking on the pop-up ignore the pop-up and do not click on it or I don't know I'll repeat the question 
So when you are surfing the internet, you see a pop-up which says scan your computer for free uh, and, and uh, check if there is a virus infection to your computer, what would you do? Would you uh, attempt the scan by clicking on the pop-up? Would you ignore the pop-up? Uh, the third answer is I don't know. So basically I don't know what is to be done in this scenario. We have about close to 68% of today's audience already costed their vote. I would wait for another 30 seconds uh, you know, before we close this opinion poll. Please mind you people, this is a very important and interesting topic as to uh, how do you react to the uh, situations on the internet uh, versus the situations in the real world. Say for example, you are on the street and somebody comes to you with some piece of information saying that hey uh, if you if you give me uh, you know some rupees today or some money today uh, you will be fortunate tomorrow what would be your reaction in this case or somebody would say that hey if you pay me uh, xyz amount of money all your problems in life will be solved what would you react to okay the same logic needs to be used when it comes to, uh, uh, you know, situations over the internet. When some some software says that, uh, uh, you know, uh, they will uh, determine the threats of your uh, computer system, uh, and and they can do it in in a matter of seconds or, or so. These are the hints that you should be taking, and you should take caution before you make such decisions. So I think we have close to 80% of today's audience already casted their vote. What I would do now is close this opinion poll and share with you the results. Okay, so uh, we have close to 32% of today's audience uh, who have said that they would attempt the scan by clicking on the pop-up. Um, this is not an option that you should use always uh, and, and the only reason is uh, if you're not sure of if the, uh, if the link uh, or if the pop-up is genuine then I would recommend you should avoid getting into uh, you know unnecessary trouble because that might be a link to a fake software 52% of today's audience say that you need to ignore the pop-up and and not to click on it so pat your back audience this is the exact answer you should we do for people who said don't know I've already explained uh, if you are not sure if the link is genuine or not, please do not click on such kind of softwares. If you want to do uh, no more, uh, you can uh, you can read through what the message is talking about. If it's mentioning a name of the software or name of the company that has published the software, then go on the internet, do a research before you decide to click on such kind of pop-ups. Let's move on with uh, today's topic. So. What is a fake antivirus? Uh, let me quickly explain that to you. So a fake antivirus is a fake security software which pretends to find dangerous security threats such as viruses, malwares, spywares, roguewares uh, on your computer. The initial scan is free and uh, you know it's, it's free of course. Uh, what it will do is it will try and scan your computer and show you the threats now mind you these threats are fraudulent threats and to remove these fraudulent threats you need to pay to uh, the software now the software displays false alert messages to computer users concerning threats on uh, their machines but these threats actually do not exist this alert will prompt users to visit a website where they will be uh, asked to pay a certain sum of money to get rid of the dangers which do not actually exist on your computer. This fake malware will continue to send you annoying and intrusive alerts unless and until you make a payment and then the malware is removed from your system. Uh, so in reality these threats are non-existent but the user ends up paying money for fixing problems uh, which actually do not exist. So let's see some typical examples of uh, these type of uh, fake antivirus or we will, uh, more technically we call it as malwares. 
Now, if you see your screen, you would see there are a, a few uh, fake antivirus softwares which which says that there is a high level of security, and they uh, you know recommend you to remove all uh, and and to erase the infected files and protect your computer and hit the buttons which says prevent attack. Or there is an XP online scanner which has detected dangerous spywares on the system. Now you see these. Uh, alert messages or these uh, you know uh, uh, messages that are shown to you are basically to scare you you know to that your machine is being infected now uh, since uh, computers are used by everyone every walks of life we have professionals who use a computer whose most important part of the computer is the, is the data inside the computer so you may have your important files there you may have backup that you've stored in your computer you have you may have so many things which you do not want to compromise with you know and you want to make sure the security is is kept upmost so for those people uh, you know they end up paying money to these kind of uh, threats fake threats that are put up by these fake softwares now let's move forward and and see how does a fake antivirus spread so uh, the first and the for very basic technique that they use is something that is called as a black hat SEO. SEO stands for search engine optimization. A very common source of fake antivirus infection is, is by clicking on links received from popular search engines while searching for topical terms. Fake antivirus authors ensures that the links lead to fake antivirus download sites which will feature prominently in search results by using black hat search engine optimization techniques. These poison results will redirect the users to fake antivirus uh, control website that displays a fake scanning page informing that the computer is infected and they must download a program to clean it up. Alternatively, a fake movie downloaded page may be displayed where a users are prompted to download a codec in order to view the movie. This codec is in fact a fake antivirus installer. Fake antivirus authors ensure that links for fake antivirus download sites will feature prominently in search results whenever a user searches for commonly searched terms such as antivirus, virus protection for computer, uh, antivirus for Windows XP, such kind of keywords. Second and very prominent uh, way that is being used by uh, these uh, uh, bad guys on the internet is spam campaigns. So email scam campaigns is what we are referring to. Fake antivirus is often sent directly to the victim as a file attachment or a link to a spam email message, which is which goes to the user, and the message is in is dis designed in such a way that the user uh, you know tends to click on those links and then is a victim of this uh, this fake software so message uh, is, is predominantly uh, sent via emails that lands up if you're using microsoft inbox it comes to your microsoft inbox or there are other email uh, services that are that are used by people uh, such as thunderbird or other uh, email uh, clients now uh, the other form of forms uh, are also observed that the way in which this fake antivirus is delivered are instant messaging applications uh, these include some popular instant messaging systems uh, which are prominently or widely used by all the users there were instances of some malware attacks also being spread by a google talk uh, the spam messages itself uses social engineering techniques to trick the user into running with the attached file or clicking on a specific link that is mentioned in uh, this this messenger service specific campaigns vary and include password reset or failed delivery message uh, in it uh, let's see some classic examples of uh, spam emails so the very basic and the most scariest of all is account suspension emails so they would send you a link saying that your facebook account has been suspended or your twitter account has been suspended or your 
banking account has been suspended something that you will uh, you know urge you to take prompt action those kind of messages and uh, people when they read such kind of emails they get worried and they click on those links what these links do is take you to a fake software site where uh, you know they they would tell you that uh, you know you need to uh, pay up for getting the suspension removed on your account and this is how the fraud is committed uh, second part is the e-card scam where an email is received pur purporting to be a form of a legitimate e-card that is sent to you on on several occasions in fact this it, there is a fake antivirus installer attached to such kind of emails uh, password reset camps victims receive a message supposedly from a popular website informing that there is an a there is a password uh, that needs to be reset and there is new one new password that is uh, sent as a file attachment and you need to click on that attachment to to uh, you know know what is a new password or package delivery scam now details of a fictitious recent postal delivery are included in such attachment files in reality the attachment is nothing but a fake virus uh, antivirus software that is included in that email let's move forward and see how does the fake antivirus software spread now the fake antivirus uh, can be downloaded onto a machine by other types of malware in addition uh, a paper download model exists where hackers are paid to infect users computers in this system the hacker controls a victim's computer using tdss or similar kind of uh, programs and is paid by a fake antivirus producer to install the fake antivirus on infected computers second info, important uh, uh, you know uh, way that is used uh, you know to uh, drive these uh, uh, you know software downloads is more popularly known as drive by downloads attack now in a drive by download attack a website is prepared with malicious uh, scripts uh, that exploit vulnerabilities in the web browser or uh, one of its plugins in the web browser when the exploit is successful the fake antivirus malware is installed automatically without the user's knowledge or consent when a victim clicks the software's purchase button they are taken to one of the fake antivirus company's websites after a victim enters their personal information and their credit card information they are sent a license key through email that essentially deactivates the bogus malware alerts providing the user with the sense that his purchase was valuable uh let's more look into more of uh, what is the behavior or how does a fake antivirus software behave so uh, first is the registry installation so uh, the fake antivirus typically uh, you know the way it behaves is it copies the installer to another location on the system and it creates a registry entry that will run the executable file on startup the installer is often copied to users profile area which is uh, your document settings or local settings or application data or into temporary file areas which is your temp files uh, with a randomly generated file name a run key entry is then created in the registry that will follow the file when the system starts up typically this will be added to uh, either the current version of the run once or the run file itself the second way or in which the fake antivirus behaves is fake scanning now once a fake antivirus is installed it will usually attempt to contact a remote website over http and will often download the main component this will initiate a few system scans where many non existent threats will be discovered the main fake antivirus window is often very professionally created and victims can easily be convinced that they are using a genuine security product actually they are not they are using a fake one next is uh, the registration and activation window 
So once the fake uh, threats have been discovered, the users are told that they must register or they must activate the product in order to clean up these threats. The users are taken to a registration website either through a browser or through the fake antivirus application where they are asked to enter their credit card numbers and other registration details. These pages are so convincingly and occasionally uh, created uh, and they might uh, consist logos of uh, or trademarks of, of genuine companies but in fact they have no relation with those companies but since they have to win over the uh, you know faith in in the person who is paying them the money they use these kind of logos and trademarks and uh, such uh, are also been said that we are uh, you know there are entities which authorize or which uh, provide certifications for certain uh, software companies that there are uh, they are true on the parameters that they are set uh, to be a genuine or, or to be a robust antivirus security software. These authorities could be Virus Bulletin or West Coast Labs. So they show these fake certifications that they have received from them in order to win your trust so that you should go ahead and buy or pay uh, for the software. Other undesired actions that they uh, might do is process termination. Uh, so basically they would terminate the running processes in your system showing that they are you know trying to help you or they are trying to you know work out uh, how a genuine software would do but actually it's it's nothing uh, they are doing nothing but just playing around with your computer system uh, they would what they would also do is a web page redirection so this is something that we have uh, come across as queries from a lot of our customers where they have uh, they've been asking us on situations where uh, their home page on the web browser was something else and after they have downloaded a software which is probably a fake antivirus or a fake uh, software the uh, the browser page or the home page of their browser is is something else sometimes it is uh, related to uh, you know uh, fake websites or also related to pornography so uh, if users have come across situations where they see their home page was Google when they installed the software and after they installed a rogue software or a fake antivirus, their home page is now changed to something else. This is the time when you should be alerted about the dangers of a fake antivirus and then you should get your system scanned from, uh, you know, your, your system should be, should be scanned from professionals who would, uh, you know, help you in, in getting rid of these kind of threats from your computer system. Uh, let's go ahead. Uh, the last one is the most important installation of more malware. So this malware, what would it do is they, it would ask you uh, or it would automatically without your permission install more malwares on your system since you know if it's a hacker based uh, attack then the hacker would take this opportunity of infecting your files or infecting your computer system with more malwares so he would have more chances in future to ask money from you this brings us to an interesting uh, poll here and the, i would uh, like to bring up that poll question for you so free antivirus software you install sends notifications and alerts in bulks with no method to reduce the notification count. What would be uh, your answer? First, I would be suspicious of such antivirus software. That's your first answer. The second answer is I would not be sus suspicious of such software. Or the third answer is I don't know. So basically, uh, this question is pertaining to uh, you know uh, your your reaction to a fake antivirus software that has been installed on your on your system, and it keeps on sending notifications and alerts in bulk. In bulk is is uh, you know it shows one alert, uh, but generally fake antivirus would would send you know tens and hundreds of them uh, to you. So 
what would be your suspicion would you be suspicious of such software or would you would you think that no it's it's okay you know it, this is how the software behaves or uh, you don't know what your reaction would be so let's let's know from you as to how would you uh, how do you see this managing this this threat that has come to your your computer we have close to about 60% of today's audience casted the vote i would wait for another 20 seconds uh, before i close this opinion poll and share the results uh, with you i remember a conversation that i was having with a very dear friend of mine who uh, is happens to be a banker and uh, one fine sunday he he called me up and he was asking me about hey nikhil i installed the google chrome application uh, the browser on my computer and uh, then he went on for uh, you know browsing uh, some other sites uh, and on one of the sites where he was reading about an article uh, he found a pop up which said uh, hey there's a free software available and if you download this free software you'd also get a, uh you know a library of 100 movies for free without knowing the dangers of such pop ups he clicked on those links and then his system uh, was infected with a malware and uh, he was in a fix so he called me basically to know what what happened and what could he do to uh, you know fix this and this this is where i uh, you know educated him about you know not clicking on links which do not look genuine because in the real world if somebody if somebody tells you that hey i'll give you an access to 20 movies or 100 movies for free if you download this software you will never believe such kind of a person i think you should be using the same level of intelligence when you are uh you know surfing on the web and not believe on thing because to be honest with you friends there is nothing called as a free meal in this world okay so we have close to 70% of today's audience casted their vote what i would now do is close this opinion poll and share the results uh with you so we have close to 66% of today's audience say that they would be suspicious of such antivirus software pat your back sorry this is the correct answer this is what you should be do what you should be doing if uh, antivirus software is sending out frequent messages or bulk ma- you know alerts to you you should be suspicious of such activity because this is not the way a genuine software would behave uh, for people who have said i don't know uh, as as i said earlier uh, you know use your uh, you know intuition of would this be correct in the real world if this happened Uh, or would this be incorrect so this would you know let your intuition guide you in making the correct decisions for people who have said i would not be suspicious of this software uh, for you people i it's correct when there is something wrong with the system you definitely get a system alert but you need to check what the frequency is if it is too much it should raise an alarm in your mind saying that hey this is not something that usually happens and this might be incorrect or it is might be a case of a fake antivirus let's move ahead uh, you know with today's webinar how to identify a fake antivirus software so uh, there are few things that we would like to uh, uh, you know tell you as we discussed in the opinion poll uh, just a few minutes back exaggerated notifications so a fake antivirus would have a knack of exaggerating things they will inform you about threats that they do not exist on your computer and they will always draw a sense of urgency and a panic situation in your mind so you should act upon those uh, messages second is a fake antivirus would uh, you know they are basically the, uh, the basic reason of creating this say, fake antivirus software is to collect money from the victims so what it will the Uh, do a fake antivirus will project that that as if it's scanning your co- co- computer for infections or, or scanning your mobile device for infections and it will demand you money for cleaning the system now a genuine antivirus software even if it's a free trial copy will detect an information clean it and give you a report for the same but here it will ask you for an instance of pay per clean 
Next is every scan detects infection. So fake antivirus have this mysterious or supernatural technology that helps them detect at least a dozen infections with every scan. Even if two harmless notepads on your system are scanned by a fake antivirus, odds are you will have an infection alert. Next is bucket full of alerts and notifications. So an essential feature of uh, any uh, antivirus software, modern antivirus software is a less intrusive nature. Uh, what do I mean by that is it's, it's most legitimate trusted and advanced security software. They do not try to bother you unless the matter is of great urgency. So take example of Twikil for instance. Uh, uh, it has a feature called as silent mode. Now once it's activated, you will not receive any kind of notifications on your computer when it does an update. On this, uh, it does not affect the uh, you know, computer security overall. It just means that antivirus is doing its job in the background without disturbing you. If you happen to visit a fake uh, or a, a bad website, it will automatically tell you the very moment when before you try to browse the website saying that this website has been reported as malicious or if you're downloading a software which is not uh, a genuine software or which is not basically a good software it will uh, and if it is, is uh, malware based it will uh, protect you against it by various defense mechanism that's inbuilt in the software most importantly, if you're visiting websites doing shopping, if you're visiting websites which are uh, infected websites or which are reported to be a bad website, then it would protect you even from zero day threats. Uh, next moving on is uh, Google is not speaking good about it. So if Google, uh, when you, when you, uh, you know, before you install a software, if you Google it and if Google shows you results which basically tells that these uh, websites are not good now this should give you a hint of stopping and not proceeding further with installing the software so what you'd get is when you google for such kind of fake antivirus it would uh, give you bad mouthed user reviews and comments and uh, no legitimate website or source that speaks volumes about this antivirus you're you are going to install or you already have trusted and known antivirus software are are going to tell uh, going to install are, are placed very well in google search results and they may be having negative user comments uh, with but which the service or the product does not there is the important thing uh, they are real and what you should do is protect the users from malware and viruses threats uh, to mobile devices so we were talking about uh, personal computers here but these threats of fake antivirus also uh, are present on the mobile technology so it's just not desktop you can have fake antivirus also affect the mobile device so if you could see on your screen this is a snapshot which, which has been taken on uh, you know, with the quick heal uh, security software for Android discovered this uh, Android malware, which says it's a mobile security, but it's actually uh, a malware. It's, it's a threat to the security of your device. Now, before installation, this particular malware or this particular application asks the user for administrator rights. It displays the option of cancel and activate. And this is where the catch lies. Even if the user chooses the cancel option, the application gets installed and takes the administrator rights anyway. So if you could look on your screen, this is where how this, this fake software works. So after the fake antivirus gets installed, it provides the user with multiple options for scanning the mobile device. Choosing any of these options will trigger the application to exist to execute malicious activities in the background and this might look like a simple virus scan to the user. A fake antivirus is designed to perform the following activities on uh, in the background. So these activities could be uh, sending information uh, from your phone which is basically a compromised device 
to an attacker's system. These could include phone numbers. Uh, these could in include the type of calls you've made, the dates of calls that you've made, the duration of the calls that you've made, the list of calls that you've made, uh, the bot ID or the even the IMEI number, which is an international mobile station equipment identity. Basically, a device number for your gadget. This may also include stealing of text messages from the devices inbox, erase users data from compromised phone and even from the SD card, which is basically uh, the external storage device on your mobile phone. It may also do something uh, which is, uh, you know, very uh, bad, which is calling or texting premium numbers. Now, these premium numbers are numbers where you get charged at a premium rate. Say, for example, if I want to send an SMS uh, within the country, uh, then I, what I would be charged is is uh, a 50 paise or 1 rupee per SMS. But when I talk about premium numbers, these numbers are charged over and above. So there, uh, there are instances where uh, uh, some premium numbers are cha charged even 100 rupees. So you send a message to that premium number and you get charged that. And these malicious software sends many messages which you have to pay for avoiding fake antivirus let's see uh, how can you do this and how can you avoid a rogue antivirus program now here are some you know tips that we would like to share with you eliminate vulnerabilities by keeping your operating system and your applications updated uh, what you have to do is you have to apply the latest security patches to your operating system and all applications including your web browsers, your flash players and also your PDF reader or any other uh, application that are there on your computer. Maintain your anti-malware defenses. Keep your antivirus and internet security softwares up to date. It's a, always a good idea to select receive automatic updates within the option of security updates be cautious about search engine results avoid clicking on sponsored links that feature within internet search results sometimes it's also advisable to be wary of the top search results the type of url into address bar whenever possible try to access a website directly by typing the url in your browser where it may be a little more time than clicking on a link that has been generated by a search engine or mentioned in an email. So if I want to visit the Quick Heels website, I would directly go to the browser and type in www.quickheel.com instead of clicking on a link which may might be found in in uh, you know any of the uh, you know uh, other places which you do not uh, find comfortable with clicking on and accessing it on your browser. Best way to know is you know the website. Click in the browser and access the website. This way you can be sure. If you're not sure, click, uh, you, know, you know, go to a popular search engine like Google or Yahoo and type the, uh, you know, name of the uh, URL or the URL itself in the uh, search engine box. That will take you to the most correct results. Again, whenever you're, uh, you know, clicking on any links or, you know, clicking any, uh, links in email or on browsers make sure that you read the URL you might find that the page is genuine looks genuine but the URL is something else say for example you are on accessing information about uh, you know one of the PDF softwares say from a very popular uh, PDF software company like Adobe and the name in the URL is something else this should alert you and make you uh, alert about not proceeding further with installing any of that software. Most important thing, do not, uh, ex you know, open attachments uh, from, uh, you know, unknown senders. This is something that was uh, taught to all of us in our schools uh, and colleges uh, that you need to, you know, always follow the traffic signal. So you, when you receive something that is come from an unknown source, stop before you proceed think about it know what is to the right action to be taken and if you find that it, it's a it's a genuine thing 
only click then only proceed so stop think and go this is a, you know a mantra that i would like to share with you today before you you process uh, or click click on any links avoid fake antivirus uh, if your computer is affected by a fake antivirus do not click anywhere on the scare window message uh, you what you should do is press alt control delete all three buttons at the same time so uh, you if you are in front of your computer you can find it in front of computer it's alt this is alt control ctrl and your delete button what will this do this will bring up a window which has task manager on it click on the name of this scareware program which is under the applications uh, and highlight it and click on the end task button what this will do is this will disconnect uh, this will basically stop that program from running and the next thing that you should do is disconnect the computer from the internet shut down the computer uh, seek professional advice from your and uh, you know from your amc vendor or from uh, any of uh, your trusted source seek professional assistance and get rid of this software most importantly how can does quickheal help you in uh, this uh, you know keeping you away from these situations uh, quickheal's core protection which is basically an uh, antivirus anti spyware anti malware anti rootkit silent firewall intrusion detection and prevention system gives you the best antivirus protection and keep you away from the threats of the internet firewall this is an essential antivirus feature which includes the stealth mode so basically when you put the stealth mode on your pc becomes invisible in the network this prevents the hackers from tracing your system in the network and attacking it browser sandbox when you run your web browser in the browser sandbox it gives you internet security protection and an uninterrupted browsing experience what it does it acts like a screen between your computer system uh, the operating system of your computer and the malicious threat thereby it uh, limits this uh, attack surface this also comes this feature also comes as a protection against a usb drive uh, protection so any if you, the, you are using a usb drive and you have the browser sandbox on it will create the screen a layer of protection between the os and contents of the usb web security this real time cloud based antivirus restricts access to malware infected fraudulent or phishing websites this gives you complete internet security protection email security it's basically a cloud based email security that prevents spam phishing or infected emails from reaching your inbox vulnerability scanner this is a proactive antivirus feature that notifies you of critical security vulnerabilities that can be used by hackers to compromise your pc and data stored on it this feature also helps you patch these vulnerabilities uh, last thing before we conclude today's session uh, we are uh, currently running with the quickheal kharido gadi jito contest where you buy a quickheal product and you win an assured gift with that you win a chance to drive home a ford eco sport this brings us to the end of this session if you have any questions please do write to us at corporate communications at quickhill.co.in you can follow us on on our uh, facebook page which is facebook.com slash quickhill av you can follow us on our twitter handle which is twitter.com slash quickhill uh, see us on our uh, google plus page we have given a bitly link to this google plus page which is bitly slash quickhill google plus you can follow us on our youtube channel where will you'll find the recording of this webinar is youtube.com slash quickheel slide share uh, where the presentation would be hosted for today's webinar would be slideshare.net slash quickheel ppts to know more about quickheel products please visit us at quickheel.com or to know more about the security world read uh, reach us at blogs.quickheel.com now handing over uh, the mic to Sarab to conclude the proceedings. Thank you very much. You, you have a blessed day ahead. Thank you everyone for being with us for this webinar. 
We hope this webinar has helped you understand the dangers of fake antivirus software in a better manner. Have a great day ahead. Goodbye.